Next on BYU Sports Nation, Cougar football adds another four-star transfer. Now which position group on the defense has upgraded the most? And we're down to the semifinals in the best win bracket. 1990 Miami versus back to Harleen. One of these has to lose? Oh boy. They're both winners. Literally, right? Both winning games, but yes, somebody's got to lose. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Tuesday, June 27th. I am Spencer Linton alongside a man Brace who me. is literally counting down the hours until BYU is a Big 12 program. Hit it! Countdown to the Big 12. Four days away. Four days, Four days. away. 96 hours. Well, not even that, right? I don't. I because didn't we're take ten hours into this BYU day, Center. so yeah. Anyway, we're we're looking at what eighty six hours away from BYU. We were told a long time ago never do math on the air, but I, I trust your. your I do math. it a lot. Yeah, there's like a there's like a weird. Uh, I've not heated that council <laughs> for better and worse. Heating council, something we haven't done quite a bit. Uh, on today's show, we got a really fun one. Chad Lewis will join the program. Talk about the historic week, obviously getting into the Big Twelve this weekend, plus the best win bracket. What's the best win in BYU history to him? Unfortunately, a game he played in, the 97 Cotton Bowl, is out. Back to Arlene versus 90 Miami. What a matchup. The Cougars add another Power 5 transfer. As you mentioned, Spencer, what kind of impact will he have on the defense? More on him. Could Puka Nakua put up Tyler Algier-like numbers in his rookie season? And Ashley Hatch's emotional response to not making the World Cup roster. All right, plenty of reasons to rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. What's Trending presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Another four-star into BYU football. The latest is Harrison Taggart, a transfer from the University of Oregon. Now he bolsters the linebacker group. So, Jerem, now with Taggart officially at BYU, and we've known about this for a little while, but again, we can't discuss it at length until it becomes officially official. Fun being the man sometimes. Now that it's clear, we are here. So which position group, specifically on BYU's defense now, thinking about Harrison Taggart and the linebackers, has upgraded the most from last season to now this season? I think it's the linebackers. And uh, Harrison Taggart puts them over the top because you bring in two dudes who are impact guys right away. Harrison Taggart was a really high-profile recruit. It's like a top 50 guy at his position in the country. Um, you know, reports out there that BYU didn't have a lot of conversation with him initially. Not exactly sure why. Um, there's always uh, perhaps good reasons for that. Maybe not. I don't know. But Harrison Taggart is a BYU Cougar, uh, which is exciting because here's a guy who's a four-star out of high school, gets recruited by one of the top teams in the country in Oregon, and now uh, it's another Pac-12 transfer to BYU, and those have yielded some great players recently. You think about the Puka Nakua's and the Kingsley Suamata'ias and the Paul Miley's. Even Samson Nakua. And Samson Nakua and others. Harrison Taggart steps in that line. A.J. Vongpacha, who's the greatest Laotian Mexican linebacker in the history of college football, we learned, joins the program from Utah State. Over 100 tackles, a guy that racked up a lot of numbers. He steps in as an experienced guy at linebacker. You add in Ben Bywater, who's led the team in tackles the last two years. Max Tooley coming off of a really nice year where he had you know, a couple of pick sixes as well. And here BYU has some experience, not to mention Ace and Micah Kafusi, not to mention Isaiah Glasker, who are three young guys they like. I like that position. Linebacker's never been a position that we've really questioned BYU's talent there. Of course, Chaz Ayu, when he's healthy, he's an interesting piece in that yeah. group as well. And we were asking about the depth last year, though, with all of the yes. injuries. That, now grief. it feels like it, you've got some quality there. Certainly a few guys with something to prove. But A.J. Vankbacha is a proven uh, producer, right, at, the, uh, at a high level. Uh, Harrison Taggart has a lot of promise. Emin Hanneman has gained – I talked to him yesterday. We played a little golf thanks to uh, BYU Athletics yesterday. Fun tournament out at Cedar Hills Golf Club. Emin Hanneman told me he's put on 25 pounds of muscle, so let's go. It's never fat, by the way. It's always pure, <laughs> undefiled muscle. So I, I like this group. And you brought up in our conversation Fisher Jackson as well. Uh, who Another was, uh, guy who had played meaningful reps. Yeah, this guy was an uh, edge rusher on the D-line. He's now at backer. So I think it's linebacker. And that's including D-line where you've added Jackson Cravens uh, from Boise State previously, Utah, Tempe kid locally. 
Isaiah Banya is a big-time player on that defense. Wyatt Daw from Southern Utah. And then defensively uh, in the backfield, Eddie Heckard, of course. Don't forget Camden Garrett, both from Weber State. I think it's backer, and uh, I, I like the addition of these guys because we walked in the offseason going, Bywater and Tule and who else? What's it going to be? I feel good about that group. This is a fun debate because – I feel like the best overall player, like one single position player, is Eddie Heckard, and he it falls in the defensive back category. So he's kind of like the best player, but... Does he carry that whole group enough? I don't know that there is enough there. Like, you look at what BYU brings in production-wise in the linebacker room now, just adding A.J. Vonkvachat... Like, just him. ...might make it the better, the best group in terms of an upgrade. At the end of the season, I want it to be the defensive line. I Amen. want it to be the in, defensive line. In this scheme line. with Jay Hill, uh, it needs to be that group. Like, backers are going to make tackles. Tackles are perhaps the most, is perhaps the most overrated stat in football. Like, unless they run out of bounds, yeah. they're going to be tackled by, or score, they're going to be tackled by somebody. Pro Football Focus thinks that Tyler Batty is going to be a dude this year in the Big 12 for BYU. And if the Cougars can get what they're hoping to get from Isaiah Banya and Jackson Cravens, both transfers from Boise State, along with an upgraded and healthy Tyler Batty, going along with some, some guys that have been around for a long time. Caden Hawes, I feel like, has been at BYU for the last seven years, right? Which is an incredible run. And Atunai Samahe as well. Yeah. Like, these these guys have been around for there. a long time. Yep. I want the answer to this question to be the defensive line I, at the too. end of the season. Right now it's not, but I, it needs to be. Because the way they play is going to be different. They're not going to be just block eaters, come up and help the linebackers make a play. It's like, no, go make a play. Mm. Like, Tyler Batty needs to have a year where he gets – uh, uh, drafted in the sixth round next year. That's the kind of year BYU needs from Tyler Batty. Isaiah Banya has a lot of uh, talent and experience. Last year he had the one sack, but I believe the year before that had five or six. And he wreaked some havoc against BYU in 2021 when BYU lost that miserable game to Boise 10th. State. Yes. yes. Boise State's defense was really good last year. Like Isaiah Banya was a big part of that, right? So hopefully uh, these, these new guys can make an impact with an already existing good experience group. Granted, that, that group is ticked off from the way they played yeah. last year. Like, it, it was they should be. one of the worst BYU defenses they be. they've had in a while. And uh, it shouldn't have been that bad. But there was a new staff brought in because of it. And now Jay Hill and this group are excited and anxious to prove themselves. Yet, you have the Big 12 sitting there, and that's new and different. And what kind of challenge is that going to be defensively for BYU in a league that at times is known for high-flying scoring on a Saturday afternoon, uh, you know, in Ames where Iowa State's putting up 50. Like, well, that, maybe not that, the last two years, but it, it, it could be a challenge in that regard. Like, BYU's going to face tougher offensive lines than it's ever faced, tougher passing schemes and running schemes than it's ever faced. This is a massive challenge, but I think BYU's done a nice job in the offseason of upgrading at all three defensive positions. Yeah, the, I, I think the thing I'm, I'm looking forward to most, other than just the actual football, is how Jay Hill actually schemes on the field. Because we talked about, we just talked about the linebacker group being maybe upgraded the most overall. Is BYU going to play two linebackers on the regular? Are they going to have five Defensive backs on the field, I would too. think nickel is very common. Defend against these yeah. high-flying, high-pass efficiency offenses? Like, how many linebackers are going to be on the field? Are they going to be put on the edge on the line to rush more from their linebacker position? And do you have – it's a good question. And do you have a few sort of hybrid guys that can help you in that? Like, um, an Ammon Hanneman, who was a safety but now is a linebacker, can he guard the tight end? Like, Ben Bywater's lateral quickness is really good. We saw his – Pick six, obviously, uh, outrunning some guys in, in the New Mexico Bowl. Like, what can he do in that type of situation? Is Chaz Ayu that hybrid guy where you can line him up at a sort of hybrid backer safety spot can he and he can be healthy? that nickel where yeah. it's like you have that third linebacker? Yeah, I'm hoping that Chaz Ayu plays a role for BYU this year. He has dealt just with yes. a rash of season-ending type injuries. BYU does not have that, like, big, stocky – middle linebacker guy that you're like, oh, he can't guard the tight end. Like, he's got to just plug the middle of the field. BYU has very versatile uh, – they all feel like outside linebacker types who they brought into the, the middle. You remember Sione Takitaki was an outside linebacker until his senior year. Then he plays middle for one year, and then he goes to the NFL. And now 
Now he's an NFL linebacker. Fred Warner didn't play middle linebacker at all at BYU. He was always an outside guy. Now he's perhaps the best middle linebacker in the NFL. So BYU has a history of sort of working with the versatility of that position. Harvey Longy would qualify as that as well. Yes, and Longy was a D end at one point, right? Which BYU typically is putting like you're maybe a bigger, faster guy on the edge who could play backer. Bronson Kafusi played linebacker. They pushed him back one year. So there's a, a history of sort of not needing like Who's the Cameron Jensen in the middle? I don't know that BYU has that sort of like Kelly Papinga, uh, you know, big neck roll guy in the as the MLB. There. I want a guy it with a neck roll. Back I kind of like field. the neck roll guy. I want a neck roll guy. Yeah, I, I would like the jersey to come up past the belly button <laughs> with like the mesh. We don't have that anymore, but that's the old school. <laughs> I want that. Like that. That Who's, is. There's nostalgia there. Who's the guy who looks like Brian Bosworth but like has it a little more? I put I would put the neck roll on Ben Bywater. I would put the neck roll on Ben Bywater. Can Ben Bywater wear? Can you Ben? Can you wear a neck roll this year just for like <laughs> one game? Maybe just Houston, <laughs> Sam Houston State. Maybe. Our question of the day: Which position group, specifically on BYU football's defense, has upgraded the most from last season? Both Jeremy and I feel like collectively it's the linebackers group. But maybe you have an argument for something else. I want it to be the defensive line at the end of the season, asked as Jerem. When was the last time we thought the defensive line was the best of the three, by the way? Like, it's been, a, one? It's been a long time. Jan Jorgensen? Maybe. Maybe like Jan in 2008 or But the nine? backers were awesome yeah. on that team. It might have been, it may have been 20 years. All right, Gerald Nichols on Instagram answers, is defensive coordinator a choice? <laughs> And that's a great point. That's a great point. <laughs> Getting Jay, I don't know if that counts as a position group. It certainly counts as a coach. It's definitely a group. Getting of Jay coaches. Hill was, a, was huge for the Cougars' defense, but I would this have a, to say. This is a pause. This is a live flyover. This is live? And, and what, what is this exactly? Are it's they a, prepping for stadium of Oh, no, no. No, this is like a, re, this is a refueling thing. This is a re, refueling r- live outside our building right now. We uh, rarely do this. Are those F-35s? Or I is don't that an know. F-22 Raptor? But God bless America. Okay. You know what I mean? Oh, look Where's at Where's Dave McKee? Dave McCann is very happy right now. Dave McCann is right very now. excited. Very excited. He, no one loves a flyover <laughs> like Dave McCann. Look at, the, look at this coverage we have. Oh, my goodness. How cool is that? An air okay, refueling. Okay, here, here it comes. Here comes the refueling. <laughs> precision. Let's go. Let's draw some parallels into sports. All right, right? BYU <laughs> needs to be this precise in its execution <laughs> at Arkansas in week three in the SEC. Okay, we're not quite there. Okay. Can yeah. you imagine flying at, I don't know, 400 miles no. an hour? No. <laughs> and trying to connect with a refueling tanker? You're like, no, you, no, you need to. Don't damage you're this you're 30, whatever is, $38 million plane. That might be cheap. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Holy cow. That's, okay. That's, that was awesome. That, yeah. that, was, Squirrel! that was fun. Okay, Let's back to our question often. of the day. Okay, which position group? Gerald Nichols said, he talked about Jay Hill. Yep, he said, yep. I would have to say BYU's linebackers. With the transfers coming in on top of the skilled players BYU has, linebackers are going to eat. Oh, I can hear the rumble of the planes going by. There you go. <laughs> you might be That's as excited cool. as Dave McCann right That's now. That's cool, man. <laughs> wow. I just saw F-35s fly over my head at Coronado Beach in San Diego and thought my eardrums were going to burst. Did you? Were you shirtless dancing? I was like not dancing. Maverick, no? I was shirtless, though. It's a beach. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> dad bod. Let's go, baby. Dad bod. I'm working hard to avoid that, man. Oh. In some contests, some what? All right. Hashtag BYUSN Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to join the conversation. Nate Crowley did that on Twitter. Safeties, because they have the Energizer Bunny coaching them now. In Jay, we trust. Jay Hill's getting Jay is the, safety the, coach. the answers right now. Yes. And, and listen, I can't answer that definitively until we see BYU's defense. Like, we can't say, oh, massive upgrade. Well, we hope I that BYU is way time. better than last year. I just want to year. give it time. It, you got to be fair to Elisa and you got to be fair to Jay. How many right. spots does BYU's defense, total defense rankings, need to improve? If you're 109th last year, for everybody to feel good, 50 total spots? Total defense, so you're 50, 50 spots? <laughs> 50 is a lot, man. And you're like that that would be uh, I'll 50, take, uh, 59. 30. I'll take 30. Okay, right now. okay. I'll take 30 That's 79. Yeah. Would we feel good if we had the 79th total defense? In the Big 12, probably. All right. Yeah. Okay, Saturday, BYU officially joins the Big 12. Don't know if you heard about this. Uh, we'll be live from the celebration dub, the big party from the Student Athlete Building Outdoor Fields, 5 to 7 Eastern. It's going to be a lot of fun. Saturday on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Dave's busy that day. He's got that show, and then he's emceeing Stadium of Fire. 
Hey, up next, there's a guy who's ready for that big party. It is BYU Associate Athletic Director Chad Lewis joining us live to discuss, yeah, what it's going to be like when you're officially in the Big 12 and which position group does he think has upgraded the most? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Oh, Leapin' Lewis. Did you have that poster in 1996? Yeah, I did that Cougar one. Illustrated. Yeah, I, I love that one. Yeah, Leapin' Lewis. There are a few editions of that. Welcome back to BYU Sports Station. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Continue to weigh in on our social media question, which position group on BYU's defense has upgraded the most from last season? We collectively think it's the linebackers. Jordan Royal on Twitter agrees with us. He says linebackers for sure. BYU's got some good cornerback depth now, but adding Harrison Taggart and A.J. Vongpacha is huge for BYU. I feel better about BYU's linebacker depth now than I certainly did at the end of last season. Yeah, and that's a great name. Jordan Royal? For B to be a BYU it's like fan? like two amazing things. In indeed indeed it is. I'm not talking about last, my last. I'm talking about my <laughs> Go. Hey, we just showed you highlights of Leap and Lewis. Chad Lewis is in Studio B right now. Brother, hanging out. Brother yo, Lewis what's today? Up? You got a in meeting a, or something? In a shirt and a tie. You got a meeting? Well, Did you stay? You know what's happening. We're going in the Big 12. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's time. It's, Let's it's go. It's time to upgrade the Wait, wardrobe. We, yeah. We ain't Spice going to up. tie on our show, though. Come on now. I just talked to your boss. He said you're going to ties from now on. You didn't even hear that yet? Okay, let's go. No what? seminary teacher? <laughs> Live games, did yes. Did you stay in this gear from Sunday after seeing the prayer at the fireside? Is that what happened? Stayed in the That's gear. That's the same tie? <laughs> Different tie. <laughs> hey, you carry a lot of titles in your life right now. In fact, we were just talking to Taysom Hill at lunch the other day about this. Taysom's uh, the man. Yeah, he's, isn't he in your uh, local ward? He's in my ward, yeah. Yes. That's What's cool. that like? Hanging he's out across the street. He's, <laughs> that's awesome. It's hard to see him because he's got a new baby and they're busy. Yep. Um, yes, yes, yeah, indeed. He's just one of the greatest dudes ever. Man, well, uh, things are certainly not slowing down for you. That, they're not slowing down. That is for right. sure. They are speeding up, and the Big that's 12 right. is on the way this week. I think I said 86 hours until it's official. This yeah. week, we're, count, we're counting down the yeah. hours, Chad. Uh, what, what's it like for you in the athletics office this week as you prepare to go into the Big 12? Uh, our athletic director, Tom Homo, has done such a good job for the last year and a half getting all of us ready, trying to get us up to speed, coaches, student athletes, administrators, um, to be prepared to go into the Big 12 with proper speed. You don't want to go in there, stub your toe, get punched in the face a couple times, and then realize, oh, we're really here. Um, he has stepped on the gas with the urgency for a long time. We've had multiple months of meetings to get ready. And that doesn't mean we're going to be perfect, but it does mean we're ready to kick the door in and go join an incredible conference. And, you know, we've talked about President Kennedy years ago saying, ask not what your country is going to do for you, but ask what you are going to do for your country. And that's how we feel about the Big 12. We're not waiting for them to shower us with stuff. We're going into the Big 12 with BYU. We want to add value, add love, add competition, add service at every turn. We want everyone in the Big 12 to look at us like brothers and sisters and, and look at us like, wow, we didn't know what you were all about. Mm. And Tom has reminded us repeatedly, if we go into the Big 12 and we stay true to who we are, our core, BYU, what we stand for, who we are, we're going to be successful. If we lose that, if we get lost in that, we're going to be in trouble. This week uh, is emblematic, uh, emblematic of that. Uh, last week, there's a really fun event at Miller Park with high fitness, uh, which was cool. There's this incredible fireside Sunday, which is on demand, by the way, uh, on the BYU TV app. You can check it out. <laughs> Chad said the opening prayer. It was great. Um, and then, you know, this weekend, we have some really fun fan fest and, and events. Give me a sense of Prior to knowing you're getting in the Big 12, sort of readiness for hopefully one day a Power 5 versus getting that invite and starting that process versus now and where BYU is in sort of, hey, we need to, like I said, be ready for this. Okay, I'll say Tom has done an incredible job scheduling for the last 10 years. We're independent. Mm -hmm. 
But if we want to go into a Power Five conference, how do we prepare? We prepare by playing incredible schedules, as incredible as we could possibly schedule. Kalani and others were not afraid of anyone on the schedule. Hopefully that gets us, our depth, our psyche, everything ready to compete at that level. And then flip it over to now, there's so many people involved. One specifically is David Almodova and his team, marketing. Um, they've done an incredible job of getting Cougar Nation ready, letting them know what's happening from all aspects of social media, every platform, every team, and then reaching out to every person associated with the Big 12, and administrators, other teams, schools, um, mayors. <laughs> so we're sending boxes of BYU gear and stuff, um, not just all BYU branded, but their own school branded stuff to let them know, like, we are family. We're coming in. And we're coming in a, as a partner. We're not coming in as a drain. We don't want to suck resources. We want to add value everywhere. And so I would say from Tom to, to everyone, we're just trying to step on the gas, be ready, and be great partners. Chad Lewis is on BYU Sports Nation as we discuss BYU's movement into the Big 12 hours away. Let's go back to September 10th of 2021 when that official invite happened and where things have changed the most from that day to where we sit now just a few days away from July 1st. Where, where have things changed the most for the athletics program overall in that amount of time? I think when Tom and Brian Santiago let us know what was happening, that we were going in the Big 12, uh, since that moment, we've, we've taken um, the strategy to prepare at that point to get into the Big 12. So Dallin Moody, he's, he's our strategist, and he's pouring over our finances constantly to see what can we do. And at that point, uh, we decided we're going heavy with the investment of resources, meaning people. We're going to get staffed up. Um, we might not have as many as the most in the Big 12, but we'll be right middle of the pack with everyone in the Big 12 when it comes to staffing. So when you think of staffing, you have to think of resources. You have to think of that's a ton of money to add 10, 20, 30 people yeah. onto BYU's payroll. And so we made sure football, basketball had an adequate amount of everyone from extra interns to whatever it is to be able to compete and be comparable. So when you think of the resources, the, the, the mental wisdom to prepare strategically, uh, I've been super impressed with everyone involved from Tom on down to how they've looked at it. Nothing is willy nilly. It wasn't like, do we need 10 more people? It was like, <laughs> let's compare. This is what we're going to do. This is what we have the resources to do. At BYU, we feel like we will always do more with less, meaning, okay, we might not have $10 billion sitting in an endowment, but what we do have, we're going to be wise and smart. And I feel like they've done that totally. And so you ask what's the biggest difference? I'd say people Yeah. everywhere, sprinkled out throughout, so to get us ready. What's the conversation like over the next couple of years? It's obviously BYU wants to operate in the black, not the red, of, okay, once we start getting X amount from the Big 12 and TV money, which will be awesome, it's going to be a lot more than we've had before, where facilities start to become a thing that BYU can either renovate or uh, build new stuff. Yeah, I mean, when you look at facilities specifically, we have a lot to do to improve. And each of our coaches want their own facilities improved. Their locker rooms, where they play, how they play. If you look at Lavelle Edwards Stadium, which we look at and we're like, I love that place. To me, it's sacred space. I, I walk on that field Amen, and I'm like, man. I can hear the angels singing. <laughs> but when the Big 12 came to look at our stadium, they're like, mm, that's a cute stadium. You know, it's like, <laughs> got a real 70s feel. We see size and think it's good, but it's really about quality of the facility. Well, we really? have a lot of size, but we have yeah. extremely limited hosting ability. Mm -hmm. We, we have so much to do to that stadium in particular, not even addressing other places, that we have our hands full. We have a very good idea of what we need to do. That will be rolled out you know, through the years. Nothing's going to happen super quick. Waiting for the money to be in hand, I assume? Yeah, I mean, if you look at what we did with, you just, we just talked about resources of people. That means uh, 
an enormous financial investment. Mm. You can't just add indefinitely. You have to be wise. And what we did, that meant we took a big chunk of cash and we invested so that we are all ready. And there's some things that are, you know, deferred blessings. We will wait for some things until we have more resources to do them properly in time and with wisdom. We'll work with President Reese and the Board of Trustees and everyone else to do them right. Yep, when West Virginia wants to upgrade the stadium, they're not consulting with the yeah. church. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Here's the good and, thing. And the How sweet numbers, is it to yeah. be able to consult with the church, to have a prophet weigh in on what we're doing, and apostles who are very wise people weigh in on what we're doing. Um, there are times when we would like to go faster, but w I can guarantee you this, we're always 100% grateful that we have their their vision and their wisdom and everything that comes with their apostleship and their calling. So it's great. Yeah, I don't mean it as a negative, just it can be a longer process. Yeah. That's what I mean. That's mine. Yeah. Great I mean, stuff. Some of those old prophets had to wait seven years for their wives, you know? It's like, <laughs> we get it. Uh, 40 years for the Salt Lake Temple. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Chad Lewis. Yeah. We hope it's not 40 years for LaBelle Edwards Stadium. Bringing the heat. Oh, yeah, no more that 70s show in Lavelle Edwards Stadium, right? That, I, I like Although that, that was that. a good era. <laughs> that was great. The 70s, 80s. The most important thing yeah. we can do is take care of what we can take care of. Sure. And that's what we do on the field, on the court, in the pool. We take care of business. If we let our eyes get distracted, we're in trouble. So Martin Luther King said, keep your eyes on the prize. And that is such a true and riveting statement. As players, as student-athletes, if you get lost in NIL in what other people get, distractions, then that means you just got lost. You can't afford to be lost as a player, as a student athlete. There's not time and you don't have the talent to be lost. You have to be riveted on what you bring to the table. So if we can control those things, we're going to be tough. Now, that, and that's an interesting point you bring up because we're all trying to figure out how to manage expectations as members of the BYU media, and certainly fans are going through that. You know, they want to wear the blue goggles and think, oh, yeah, 10 wins, let's go. Season number one, we're going to show them what's up. How are you handling expectations for year one of the Big 12, football specifically? Okay, let's talk football. This is exactly how I handle it. As a player, I wanted to win every game. Every game. I, I never went into a season saying, like a fan or like commentators might say, ah, we'll probably win six, seven, eight <laughs> games. Never. Not one time. That's foreign to my DNA. I don't understand it. I want to win every game. This is what I will say about the conference. Now that we're in a conference and every game matters, I'm saying everything is going to come down to Oklahoma State last game of the year. Ooh. I believe it. I feel it. Ooh. And I'm strong about that. Okay. Going to have to win a road game in Stillwater. Okay, let's go. Let's finish with this. And we could talk for a, a lifetime about a million things. We're running out of time. Okay, we, we've been doing this best win bracket. Uh, the greatest wins in BYU football history. It's been really fun. It's been chalk. We're down to the final four seeds. The Cotton Bowl was the five seed. Barely lost out. Barely lost. The four seed. <laughs> yeah. What was the four seed? Back to Harleen. Tough matchup, right? Today is Beck to Harleen versus 1990 Miami. What's the better win in BYU football? 1990 Miami, for sure. They're number one. They came in here. We beat them in Lavelle River Stadium to open the seat. I mean, it was so powerful. Cougar fans rushed the field. I was one month away from going on my mission to Taiwan. I was in attendance. I was on the field. <laughs> we just beat the number one team yes. in the country. Yes, and that Ty team Demer was unbelievable. It was that got him the Heisman Trophy, and that Miami team finished number three that season. Right. So you beat them at number amazing. one. They were still awesome. <laughs> it's just a if matter. If you don't have chills thinking about that game, something's wrong. You are, <laughs> you're past feeling. You're past feeling. <laughs> right. So plug in. I feel like you have more scriptural references in a suit than normal. <laughs> that, 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 that <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I think, too. And the, the emotion of the rivalry is one thing. Also, sort of the Twitter audience is probably going to skew a little younger. Beck to Harleen may have been more and than I, I don't want to whatever. discount the you Beck to Harleen. Mean? Going up there to Utah, beating them up there, the Beck to Harleen. The play was phenomenal. The game was phenomenal. Ending the, the way the team losing fought, streak to Utah. It was incredible. Yeah. And I know personally walking into that stadium, I had to park a mile away. I was called names that I, I – my, my heart was on fire. 
I felt like, uh, I don't even want to say what I felt like. <laughs> it felt like Maxwell. <laughs> it, was, it was unbelievable to be treated that way by, by other human beings. So when we won that game, it was like, that was really sweet. <laughs> I was so pumped. Yeah. And every time I see that, that throw, the catch, the, the call by Greg Rebell, I think of, like, there's so many emotions swirling around. The, the rivalry for a student athlete, that game is so fun to play. The fans, the intensity, the, the length of the time. Um, so I'm not discounting that amazing yeah. game. And especially that amazing play. That was really sweet. Yeah, it's not often you beat the defending national champions who come in ranked number one as a consensus in number one to begin stadium, the season in your then, home stadium. And then your five foot ten quarterback wins the Heisman. He like throws for four hundred plus yards. Unbelievable. <laughs> and he was my starting quarterback when I got to Philadelphia, and it was just the sweetest thing How ever. Cool is that? <laughs> Coolest dude ever. He's amazing. All right, great stuff, Chad. We appreciate Thanks. you Brother coming Brother Lewis, in. we appreciate yes. you coming in. You can call me whatever you want. President. But at 6 o'clock tonight, it's dinner. Do not call me late. I'm <laughs> coming. He's called you some stuff, too. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Chad. Oh, great stuff. Okay, uh, coming up Friday night, we're going late, baby. 11th, 11 Mountain Time. Countdown to the Big 12 celebration. This is going to be streamed live on the BYU Cougars social platforms. You can, uh, you know, be there. Uh, limited number of fans uh, at Student Athlete uh, Building. It's going to be fun. 1,500 fans, first 1,500 get a uh, free T-shirt, and uh, there'll be fireworks. It's going to be awesome. Th this is going to be cool. I will. I might need a nap that day. It's going to be a late night. Yeah, yeah. Get a nap. We're we're, we're counting down the clock. This is like New Year's Eve, but BYU edition for the Big 12. But cooler. <laughs> Up next, will Puka Nakua? have as big an impact for his team in his rookie season, the Los Angeles Rams, as Tyler Algier did for the Atlanta Falcons? Ooh, good question. What do you think? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Follow BYU Sports Nation on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Welcome back to Studio B. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Got a busy day of headlines. Let's go. BYU football adds another transfer in former Corner Canyon out of Draper, Utah. Four-star linebacker Harrison Taggart, who redshirted last year, played 10 snaps in three games. He has four years of eligibility. Let's go. How about former BYU men's golfer Zach Blair doing work on the PGA Tour recently at the Travelers Championship? He shot a tour best eight under in his final round and finished tight for second on Sunday. Cashed in at just over $2 million for that second place finish. Hey. And has moved up to number 99 in the official world golf rankings. Congratulations to Zach. And he's on the fringe of getting his uh, tour card back, right? Yeah, had he, he, had he finished second by himself at, at the Travelers? So he was he, one stroke away from getting the card back. He would have gotten the card back, he's, I believe. He's very close, though, which is exciting. Yeah. Uh, Berlin Long of the women's golf team qualifies for the U.S. Amateur Championship held August 14th through the 20th. Congratulations. Kenneth Rooks continues to do work, named a Bowerman semi-finalist, and he deserves this. The Bowerman Award is given to the most outstanding NCAA track and field athletes. He is, of course, the steeplechase champion and recipient of the BYU Sports Nation karma to do so. Speaking of, 2004 Olympian and three-time NCAA champion track star Tiffany Hogan joins the track and field staff awesome. after being an assistant coach from 2015 to 2023 at Weber State. It's not just Jay Hill coming south from Ogden. Ashley Hatch scored her seventh goal of the season for the Washington Spirit over the weekend. Fifth time scoring seven or more regular season goals in the season, tying for the most seasons with seven or more goals in NWSL history. She is unbelievable. If there is some kind of injury or issue with a player, I would wonder if she's the first called up to the World Cup run. How could she not be? It's very disappointing that she's not. I'm actually trying to hide the anger. I mean, I've read several articles from insiders and experts all saying, like, the biggest snub is Ashley Hatch. Yeah. <sighs> Let's move on so we don't get uh, Trent Mosher made the USA U21 roster for the World Championships, being played in Bahrain July 7th through the 16th. Mosher led the Americans in kills during the Norseki U21 tournament in Cuba a few weeks ago. Congratulations to Luke Benson of BYU Men's Volleyball. Has earned a spot on the United States Collegiate National Team roster. He will join the team next week for training in Anaheim. 
Head coach of the team was former Cougar player and coach Chris McGowan. Oh, yeah, and former BYU TV uh, play by There you go. And Alexa Gray had 17 points and three blocks uh, for Team Canada. All those kills, of course. Uh, 20 points total for Team Canada in a sweep of Croatia today in Suwon, South Korea. Is that how you say it? Suwon. Suwon. Yes, yes, Suwon. Is that in your mission or somewhere Suwon. else? That was uh, around Seoul. Yeah. Yeah, fun fact about the word Seoul. We say Seoul, Korea. It's actually two syllables in Korean. Seoul, Ul. Yeah. Seoul. Yeah, how about that? Okay? <laughs> There's your Korean fact. Beijing. Seoul. <laughs> I like it. That's how you actually say the name Seoul. of it. Seoul. Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> there, there you go. Yeah. All right, those are today's headlines and your Korean lesson. <laughs> now let's opinionate in the whip. Cougar Whip Round presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. ESPN writers pegged one surprise offseason stand-up from each of the 32 NFL teams. They have Puka Nakua as the Rams guy. Will Puka have as big of an impact for the Rams offense this season as Tyler Algier had for the Falcons last year? Man, if it comes down to just yards, Puka's going to need 1,035 receiving yards in his rookie season on a team that has Cooper Cup and Tyler Higby. Like, I feel like that's a lot to ask. But, I mean, Puka's play, he's big play Puka. So, like, I, I feel like... He's going to be on SportsCenter a few times making some like top 10 type catches for touchdowns on the fade route in the end zone. He's going to benefit from Cooper Cup being double teamed. And so, yes, he will have a great impact, but it's going to be tough to beat 1,035 rushing yards, which Tyler Algier put up last year. So I'm going to still give the edge to Tyler. I hope Puka proves me wrong. Puka won't put up the numbers that Tyler did, but I think in the end, Puka will be the greatest receiver from BYU in NFL history. Like, I, BYU's better not, than I, Austin Collie? Yes. Austin's career was cut short with uh, concussions. I think Puka will be better than Austin was in the NFL. Regarding next season, what if I told you Tyler Higby was targeted 10 more times than Cooper Cup? That surprised me. 108 to 98. The next guy, uh, Ben Skaronic, 61 times. Can, can Puka be the third most targeted guy on the Rams? I'm hoping he's top four targets. Um, Allen Robinson last year as well, of course. But there were some injuries to some guys. Yeah. Cooper would have had like 140 targets, but he got hurt. He was hurt. He was out for three or four weeks. Yes. So, I, you know, I, I think he could have a really effective year. I would love for him to have 50 targets, 35 catches, something like 500 plus yards. That'd be a really good year. I think if Puka's healthy, he's going to have a long, fruitful NFL yeah. career. If he's not had a guy like Puka, uh, like he's a better version of Cody Hoffman to me. And Cody didn't really land in the NFL, never played in the game in the NFL. Yeah, what, what is impact? How do you define impact other than yards and be one touchdowns? Of the, be one of, well, that's in, you can find it that way, right? Um, but targets is we care about you, right? Like, if, if you don't care yeah. about a certain receiver, you don't throw the If ball. Puka Nakua can average 40 yards a game, average 40 yards a game over 17 regular season games, that's 680 yards for the season. That would be a probably, dynamite Probably too season. high. Yeah, I, I would go. So maybe 30? I'd love it. If Yeah, if he gets 500 yards. 510 yards season, would be 30 yeah. yards a game I for want he, him games. to be one of the top four guys in receiving yards. Sure. Whew. Yeah, what, what is the impact other than yards and touchdowns? Because, like, Tyler is a running back. They Like, if there was no Cooper Cup, and they said, Puka, we drafted you in the second round, third round, and we're going to throw you the ball a lot. Like, Tyler was a surprise, right? It's like, oh, they're going to make him the main guy as a fifth-round pick. Both fifth-round guys, which like, is fun. It, yeah, which is great. Um, I just think that position group has a guy there that Tyler didn't with the Falcons in the running back. Mm, okay. Pro Two football. Guys, if you count Tyler. Pro Football Focus has BYU cornerback Eddie Heckard as the third highest graded returning cornerback in the Big 12 Conference. If that is the case, will Eddie Heckard be drafted after this season? Let's say he finishes top three in conference. Uh, if he finishes top three, that's a heck of a year, man. Um, that's based off his FCS numbers. This is going to be a different ball game, right? I, I don't anticipate Eddie being like, you know, top 10 graded per se. But like if he's in the top 15 or 20, that's pretty good. I don't know if he's going to be drafted. Like, he wasn't going to be drafted, so that's why he came to BYU. Perhaps he has a monster year. That's what we're certainly hoping for. But um, it's going to be tough to get a good grade at corner in the Big 12. Like, it's just a tough league against the pass, man. They put up money. I'm excited to watch what Eddie Hecker does against Power 5 competition week in and week out. And what cornerback have we ever expected this of? And, and what cornerback has had to go up against this kind of competition before in BYU history? Like, we're asking a lot to say, Eddie Eckert's going to be top three, mm. right? We're not asking that. We're just saying, what if? 
Michael Davis is uh, the lone BYU wall. I guess Chris Wilcox is on a practice squad with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. And then Michael Davis is with the Los Angeles Chargers. It would be nice to get another in the, into the league. Yeah. And all things even preseason, right? Um, 53 will be named later. Maybe Chris Mixon. But, yeah, like, who's the best corner in BYU history? Are we expecting them to walk into the Big 12? And t- you know what I mean? Somewhere Derwin Gray is like. Derwin Gray is like. His ears are perking up. Like, by the way. Are you discussing I, greatest cornerback in history? I found this old school clip of Derwin Gray as like a, like office linebacker Terry Tate type thing. But he was like a, you know, a religious linebacker <laughs> helping come to Jesus. Like, it was hilarious. I tagged him on Instagram. Read your scriptures. <laughs> it, was, it was funny, man. Get to early morning <laughs> seminary. That's what we need. Ben, Say your prayers. Ben Bywater tackling you. Uh, Get up. <laughs> There's a Terry Tate, yes. a religious. I posted it. I'll, I'll dig it up again and tweet it. It was hilarious. I was like, what is this? Derwin Gray's in a football uniform tackling people? <laughs> like talking about the gospel? Oh, uh, <laughs> You better love your neighbor. <laughs> it was, or else. It was awesome. <laughs> up next. A spot in the best win bracket oh my championship gosh. is on the line. How do we determine between these two? Number one seed Miami in 1990 versus Beck to Harleen in 2006. What? what? I'm glad that you all have to decide collectively. It could be 50-50. How are we going to do a tiebreak? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live in Studio B. It is time for our BYU football best win bracket update. We're trying to decide yeah, for Derwin. the greatest win in BYU football history. It is 90 Miami. <sighs> it should win this. It, that's the number one seed, but it should win this game. There are upsets. Upsets happen. Ha- they haven't yet. They Beck, haven't yet. Will Beck to Harleen upset. The number one overall seed, the 1990 win against then number one ranked but Miami. First, the final matchup of the second round. We got to uh, yep. announce this one. Three seed 1980 SMU, aka the Miracle Bowl, taking on six seed 2021 Utah. Whew. Moving on to the second round with a dominant 80 percent. 80 percent is the Miracle Bowl. All right. Did you have? Dave and I talked about this. Did your family have the glass from that, like the cup? From the Miracle Bowl. The glass? Dave and I both, like, Dave's like, our family had that, and I was like, my grandma had that in Orem. This glass that had the whole schedule on it. I, I was like, that's I the coolest glass did. ever. I, I want to drink from that glass when I go to grandma's house. I buy that on 412 South in Orem. eBay? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> eBay visit later today? You going to go to the eBay store? <laughs> Is there a BYU section? <laughs> All right. I've already alluded to it. Our matchup of the day is one we've talked about with Chad Lewis. We've been discussing this for a while, thinking that it was going to come to this like, oh man, how do you decide between these two? Whew, here is our matchup of the day. What a play by Ty Bentley. He likes to put on a show. Knocked away at the last minute. Listen to the crowd. Harleen goes up top, touchdown. Let's it go. Find this guy. Oh, here we go. The, number one seed, Miami. Oh, the, number four seed, back to Harleen. 1990 Miami. The reigning national champion yes. and the number one team in the country, Miami Hurricanes. UA had been destroyed at Miami the year before. Ty Detmer and number 16 BYU, 13 and a half point dogs. He's scrambling around, finds Bellini in the corner of the end zone. BYU trailed 21-20 in the fourth. Threw for 406, three touchdown, launched the Heisman campaign. Big touchdown there. Irvin Lee intercepts Craig Erickson. Pass in the end zone. Break, uh, the pass breakup for the freshman, 28-21. Oh, nope. What a play. BYU wins 28-21. Miami finished ranked third, lost two games. That is the best win by current rank and final rank of a team in BYU history. That is the best win in BYU history. That is the best win. I mean, Vote for it. <laughs> and I love Beck to Arlene. I have it hanging, the picture I'm, I'm hanging with up in my you. house. We stood next to each other I on the sideline for that. I, I was a primary player in the seating of these. Like, I agree with you. But do the fans. Do the fans. Beck to Arlene. 
Let's rewind to 2006. 21st ranked BYU had lost four games in a row to Utah. Oh, look at this SD footage on the mountain. An Thank undefeated goodness, Mountain gone. West season was on the line for BYU. Johnny Harleen had three touchdown mm. catches. That one over Eric Weddle. And then, of course, the play. Three shuffling, seconds. Shuffling, shuffling. Three seconds on the clock, but this now play took comes. 11 seconds. And the amount of desperation that all BYU fans were feeling in this moment as John Beck rolled to his right. We were standing at an angle. We're Jared, on the left side right now on the side. And I was thinking, where in the heck is he throwing the ball? Every person in the world besides John and Johnny thought the same thing. Like, where's the ball going? And then in comes Johnny Harleen sliding onto his knees. As Sarah McLaughlin says, oh. into the arms of the enemy. Seriously. Seriously. Fly away. <laughs> Two months later, I was you at the BYU it. at Utah basketball game. BYU had not won in the Huntsman Center in like, I want to say 11 or 12 years. Yeah. And there were four BYU fans sitting on the front row. One of them had a t-shirt on that said, Harleen is still open. Yeah. That's the first time I saw still, that. Still a good joke. Incredible. Still good. All right, the semifinals. Oh my you gosh. Decide. <laughs> this is epic. <laughs> Holy Who's going into the championship round to take on either the two seed, the win over Michigan to secure the national championship in 84, or the Miracle Bowl in 1980? I thought, wow. maybe, I thought maybe we were going to have a Cotton Bowl versus Miami scenario here in the semifinals. The yeah, Cotton Bowl no. versus Bechter Harlan was so close. It was very close. 52 48, I think. But that then was our you one. I think you sent out a tweet that may have swayed <laughs> some things last second. <laughs> I'm not that powerful. Oh, I, uh, I, hey, all it took was a few votes last night. I was like, second. oh, one Utah should have. <laughs> hey, join us Friday for a uh, BYU Sports Station special. BYU football great moments as told by players, volume one, including Ty Detmer, Mitch Matthews, Tanner Mangum, Max Hall, breakdown moments like yeah. 90 Miami, the Mangum Miracle, fourth and 18 against Utah 07. Just to name a few, super fun show. Friday noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Up next, rise and shout out to a former Cougar who is determined to overcome a challenging obstacle. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Some imagery from Sunday night, Tyler Batty and, uh, you know, Olivia Katoa got married, uh, Olivia Wade and Katoa and, and uh, Trey Stewart and Chase Roberts and so on. You can catch that on demand, the Athletic Fireside, if you missed it, on the BYU TV app. Of course, BYU Sports Nation on demand as well. You can download the free apps, download the podcast. Well. Our question of the day, which position group on BYU's defense has upgraded the most from last season to this season? Our elite voice of the day presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated comes from BYU fan guy on Twitter. The linebackers have added a lot of exciting talent and depth. One of the most solid groups on the team going to be exciting to watch them fly around. I'm excited that Ace and Micah don't have to be asked to do a ton this year. Like, I don't want freshmen to have to contribute right away. That, that was, that's never been a model that worked super successfully because BYU is not bringing in a five-star freshman who is expected to do that, right? Yeah, and the, the same, same can be said for Isaiah Glasker. Yes. Right? Th those are three young guys that they can bring along, and when they're juniors and seniors, perhaps they are the guys. Right? Let's go. It's okay to, you know, in our day and age, like, wait a little while to play. It's okay. Like, contrary to is it current just belief, for like, it's, it's okay to wait a minute and then be the guy. <laughs> it's okay. And and is being a backup and a, one play away on a Big 12 competitive squad better than being a starter on another team Great that may question. not have that same situation? All right. Today's Rise and Shoutout presented by Mountain America, the official credit union to BYU Athletics. We want to give it wholeheartedly to Ashley Hatch, who is incredible. She shared her feelings recently on Instagram, a super vulnerable post going into the emotions of not making, she said, uh, the, the roster said, I'm gutted. I think I felt almost every adjective there is to explain how I feel about not making the world, this World Cup roster. Heartbroken, devastated, disappointed, gutted, confused, lost. You get the picture. I am still in the process of navigating all these feelings and emotions and trying to comprehend it all while still performing and playing games for the Washington spirit, and it is hard. Yeah. I, and she just said, so cheers to this crazy thing called life and all that comes with it, the lessons to be learned in the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. I mean, she's been through it. it it's really disappointing. She's And let's be honest, she might be kind of 
too old for the next one. Like she might be out of her prime and not in the mix. Like th this was the best chance she had at making this roster. Yeah. And again, if there's some sort of issue, she might be the first alternate and actually be on the roster when they start playing in about three weeks in New Zealand and Australia. So really tough situation. Handling Holy it like cow. a champ though. For sure. Yeah. Uh, and she did say she wanted to recognize everyone for the overwhelming love and support. We'll continue to bring it. Yeah. She deserves it. Still scoring it. goals. She deserves Playing it. for a club, scoring goals. Our thanks to today's guest, Chad Lewis. Sorry to Dennis Pitta, we ran out of time. For Jerem, I'm Spencer. Shout out to Haley Steed. Talk about athletes all the time. I saw the other day. We'll see you tomorrow on BYU Sports Station. Go Cougs. Miami or back to Harleen? Miami, bro.